On today's episode, we are gonna create a manual mesh using Clipper. That means we're gonna get all the functionality of a BL Touch bed leveler by just using our Z end stop. We're also going to adjust our Z offset and find a way that Clipper has to help us level our bed. And here we go. Folks, welcome to the channel. I am Leo of Prince Leo 3D. Thank you for stopping by. It's October, Halloween's bound. I have my Terrifier shirt on. I just saw the sequel in theaters with some of my friends. It was an awesome time. The theater was a riot. But now we're back to printing and we're focusing on Clipper firmware. In a previous video, we installed Clipper and now in an upcoming series, I'm gonna have some intro pieces to get you better able to use Clipper and your printer. Today's episode is all gonna be about creating a manual mesh meaning we're going to get the same functionality as if we had an auto bed leveling device but we're just going to use our stock z end stop and we're not going to move it anywhere it's going to stay right here now for today's demonstration we're using the vox lab aquila s2 but this method can be applied to any 3d printer that uses an end stop but we're not just going to do that we're going to adjust our z end stop to get that perfect first layer squish and then we're going to level our bed using some other built-in functions from Clipper. The order in which we're going to perform these operations is adjust our Z offset, level our bed, create a bed mesh, and then we're going to learn how to implement that bed mesh and eventually live Z offset adjust. Now, I keep saying this word mesh, creating a mesh. What is that? Well, if we were to have a BL Touch auto bed leveling device, what that does is takes measurements of our bed at various locations. It then turns those measurements into a virtual topography of our bed, known as a mesh. That virtual topography is supposed to be a representation of the actual dips and contours of our bed. While our 3D printer is printing, that mesh will be used so the nozzle adjusts to the contours of the actual bed. What this does is help us print a completely flat first layer. Now the first thing I want to do is physically adjust my Z end stop. Now regardless of your firmware, you should probably have done this already. I start by loosening up the end stop and bringing it as far down as it can go. And then in fluid, I disengage the stepper motors so I can manually lower the Z axes. I lower the nozzle so it's just above the bed, and then I bring the end stop up to meet the gantry until it activates. When I'm happy of its location, I tighten the end stop back up. This way, when the printer contacts the end stop, the nozzle will be in its current location, which is just above the bed. Now, when we level our bed, we don't have to make any major adjustments with the adjustment knobs. The Z offset adjustment starts in your front end, and I'm using Fluid. And the first thing we need to do is make a change to our printer.cfg. And that's in stepper Z. The position max is 250. We need to make a position min. And we need to make it a negative number. This way our nozzle, our nozzle can go below zero, which is what we're attempting to do. I'm going to make it negative two. You should not need to make it more than that. Save and restart. That will apply it. And we can begin the calibration. Now this calibration is not completely automated. We need to take some steps to get it there. First, we're going to do is home all our axes. Then after that, we're going to move our nozzle to the center of the bed. Now, because this is broken up into steps, home it, move it, and then perform the calibration. This is a perfect example of how we can create a macro to do all these things for us. Macros is going to be a separate video. Once we're homed, we're going to move the nozzle to the center of the bed. For me on the VoxLab Aquila S2 that we're using today, it's about 125 in the X and 125 in the Y. Once we're homed and we're in the center of the bed, we're going to run the command Z and stop calibrate. And you'll see a manual probe option comes up. Now what we're seeing here is the movement adjustments we have for our nozzle. Plus moves it away from the bed. The minus moves it closer to the bed. At top, we have a movement of one millimeter and then different increments below it. It does not go down in order for whatever reason. It's kind of scattered. So just make sure when you move it, you're moving it the intended amount. I get out my post-it note, I feel under the bed and I have a lot of gap there. I can visually see that I have a pretty good gap. I'm going to move this down 
a tenth of a millimeter. Still nothing. Another tenth. And you're going to notice the nozzle moves up before it moves down. That is just its functionality. So it will always jump up and then go to the proper position. Don't be alarmed. Now I'm moving this in tenths of a millimeter just because I don't want to make any real gross movements because I'm really close and I could bang into my bed. So right here, I can really no longer get my posted under it. So I'm going to move it up a little bit. Still pretty close. All right. That's about where I want it to be. So at this point, I'm happy with it. I click the accept button. Now you'll see it tells us to save our config or we can do it up here. If we click save config and restart right up here, it'll let us know the changes that are going to be saved. And for us, it's the position end stop. We've created a 0.85 Z offset. Save config and restart. And now we can go into printer.cfg to make sure that's saved. Go under stepper Z and I now see position end stop has been commented out. And if I go all the way to the bottom, I'll see there is a new addition down here. And this is what sets up our Z offset. The position end stop is 0.85, meaning we have a 0.85 Z offset. That's it for now. We're going to make a further adjustment, a live adjustment during our first print, but we can move on to manually leveling our bed. Now we've made the first part of our Z offset adjustment. The last part will be a live adjustment during our first print. Next, we're going to tackle bed leveling. Now Clipper doesn't do anything different for bed leveling. It just helps automate the process for us. What we're going to do with Clipper is use some built-in features to bring the nozzle directly above each of the four adjustment knobs. We'll go around and we'll just level them like we normally do with a piece of paper. I usually choose a post-it note. What we need to do in order to set this up is we need to get the coordinates for each four of the bed screws and they are labeled in Clipper. Bed screw front left is one. Two is the front right bed screw. Behind that, right rear is three and four is the rear left bed screw. How do we get those coordinates? Well, we're gonna use our nozzle. As we know, our home screen always has the coordinates of where our nozzle is. So we're gonna move our nozzle directly over the adjustment knob and find out exactly what it is. And we're gonna write it down on a piece of paper to be input into our printer.cfg after that. Now we're gonna find the coordinates of our bed level screws. We're gonna do bed level screw one first. I'm gonna hold my printer if I haven't done so already. That opens up the tool command. This way we can move our nozzle around. It also puts our nozzle right above or right near that number one adjustment knob so I don't have to make a ton of movements. Once I'm here at home, I'm going to try and get my nozzle right over that adjustment screw. So I start moving it using the tool command. And I am looking as I do this at my nozzle and at the bed screw. And then once you feel like you're above the bed screw where you want it, you can write down those coordinates. And for me, they are X24, Y38. Now bed screw one and two are gonna be aligned at the same Y level or at the same Y coordinate. So we know that bed screw two's Y is gonna be 38 and bed screw four, it's gonna be aligned along the X axis because the nozzle is gonna be in the same position on the X axis. So we know that screw four's X is going to be 24. After that, we're going to do bed level screw three. That's the back rear corner. Now you're going to want to move all around the bed while you're doing this so you can see it from all angles. Now that I have the nozzle above the screw where I feel is adequate, I can write down the coordinates in my tool location. X194, Y204. So now we can extrapolate screw two and screw four based on these numbers. So we know that screw two has the same Y coordinate as one, so it was 38 and the X coordinate where the nozzle is along the X axis is gonna be the same as screw three, which is 194, our current position. Same goes for screw four. The Y location where the bed is currently is gonna be the same for screw three and screw four. So that means 204 is the Y coordinate, and we already did this one, but the X coordinate on four is gonna match screw one, which was 24. So that would be 24, 204 for screw number four. So now that we've written down all these numbers, we're gonna make a modification to our printer.cfg to use them. I open up printer.cfg and we're gonna add a section. You can add it anywhere you want. You just can't add it within another section. You need free space. And it's gonna be called bed screws in brackets. And under there, we need four separate sections. Screw number one, two, 
three, and four. And we're gonna fill them out with the coordinates that we have measured. I have a vanilla template on my website. You can just copy and paste it instead of writing all this out. Of course, the coordinates are gonna be different. So do not match these coordinates exactly. They will likely be different for your printer unless you are rocking an Aquila S2 as I am. Once we've input all the correct numbers, we save and restart. This takes effect and we can run the bed screw command to help us level our bed. First thing we do is home our axes. And then we're going to input the command bed screws adjust. A new menu opens up and the nozzle gets brought over the first bed screw. And now we're just off to normal bed leveling. There are three options. We can abort this entire operation. We can mark this screw as being adjusted or we can accept where it is. So if you were to make a rotation on this knob more than one eighth of a turn, then that would be adjusted. If it's less than an eighth, it's not really that much of a change. You can hit accept it and keep moving on. All right, I made an adjustment. So I click adjusted and the nozzle moves to the next screw. And this is the same normal leveling process. I'm trying to get the equal tension on this post note at all points. That was adjusted. So I adjusted every single one of my knobs so it starts the process over. We will continue doing this process until I have accepted the measurement at each corner and then it finishes and we should have a nice leveled bed. Now this isn't an end all be all. We could continue running this process if we weren't happy. This doesn't save into our configuration. This is just physically helping us level our bed. Now that we leveled our bed, we can finally get to creating our mesh. And the most important feature and kind of the one I think that troubles most people is getting the bounds of the bed mesh, meaning the minimum and the maximum area for the bed to probe. Now, the way we're gonna do this is very similar and almost identical to how we got the coordinates for our bed leveling screws. First, we have to decide how big of an area we want to probe or for our mesh to cover. Generally, I stay about five millimeters off the edge on each side. So in order to find out what the bounds of our mesh are gonna be, it's gonna be just like the adjustment screws. We only need to find the minimum XY coordinates on the front left corner and the maximum XY coordinates on the back right corner. Everything else will be within the box that we create with just those two coordinates. How do we figure that out? Well, again, we're just going to put our nozzle right over that position. Now we're on to the fun stuff, creating our manual mesh. And to do that, we again need to add some features to printer.cfg find some empty space and I'm just going to paste this entire section in. you can find this in the description as well as on my website and this is a bed mesh section this is all the data that the printer is going to use to perform the bed mesh calibration starting from the top speed is the speed at which the nozzle will move between points horizontal move Z this is how far the nozzle is going to come up in the vertical direction between points that's five millimeters our mesh min and mesh max. These are the uh, big features here, the golden goose. These we have to calibrate ourselves. We're not gonna use these and I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. Under that, probe count, number of probes you want along the X and the Y axis, five out of five is a decent amount. We can multiply those, that's 25 total probe points. We're gonna be doing this manually, keep that in mind. So how much time do you wanna actually wanna spend doing this? Under that, mesh PPS. Now this is the number of points between the points that we actually probe that the algorithm or the clipper is going to compute. So even though we're only doing five by five, we're actually gonna get data for much, much more than that because clipper is gonna calculate mesh points two between each probing point along the X and the Y axis. Fade start. At some point, we're no longer gonna be using the bed mesh to adjust the contour of our print. One, the fade start is where we start to lessen its effect. So one millimeter is the height right now that we have set for the mesh to begin fading out. And by 10 millimeters of print height, the mesh will no longer be used. Now, the most important aspects of this configuration are the mesh min and the mesh max. And it's really simple. How far on our bed do we want up to probe? We're using the nozzle. So we can put the nozzle where we want it to start. And then we can move the nozzle to the end and figure out those two points, just like we did with our leveling screws. Mesh min is pretty easy. I like to move my nozzle in 10 millimeters from the X and 10 millimeters from the Y. I just want to save and restart right now. So I'm going to put in any number right here for mesh max. It's going to be 200, 200. Save and restart. And then we'll go to our coordinate system, our tool option, move our nozzle to where we want to begin our mesh. 
So in order to move our tool around, the nozzle around, we need to home it first. I'm going to move it to 1010 because that's where I think we should start. 10. This is 10 on the X and 10 on the Y. If you like where this is beginning, then you can put this in. Do you want it to go a little further back on the Y axis? Well, move it there. This would be the beginning point. That means the nozzle is not going to go any further left on the X axis, and it's not going to go any further towards us on the Y axis. So I'm going to keep that 10, 14. I'm just going to write that down. Now I need the max, how far it's going to go maximum to the X and maximum to the Y. So let's move it all the way over to the max X. We need the nozzle to be above the bed for this, obviously. So we can't go over the bed or past the bed. I kind of like where it is right there. So that's going to be my max X. And I'm going to go all the way back to how far back I want to go on the Y. I think that's a good spot for it. So now we have my coordinates 200 to 24. That would be my maximum mesh value. Between the two points that we calculated, there will be a probing grid square, and that's where the nozzle will remain, right in that location. So now with this new information, we're going to go back into printer.cfg and insert it. Our mesh min was 1014, and our mesh max that I calculated was 200. I was right on that. 200, 224. Now, don't copy mine. You need to do this work for yourself because everyone's bed's a little different. Because this is a tutorial, I don't want to spend all day doing this. For now, I'm just going to make a 3x3 three three probing crib. One other adjustment we're going to make is the horizontal move Z. This is generally good for a BL touch or a censored printer. Because we're not using that, we're only going to go to a horizontal move of 1. And that's it. We've now set up our bed mesh. We can begin our calibration. After we've set up the bed mesh and all the configurations needed in our printer.cfg, we can run that calibration. And again, this will begin the bed mesh process and unlike automatic probing which that word should tell you something automatic we're going to be manually doing it so the nozzle is going to go over each probe point and we're going to perform the same procedure we performed when we adjusted our z offset we're going to use that piece of paper and we're going to get tolerance on it so it's even amongst all points clipper is doing all the mathematics in the background it's finding out how far away or how close the nozzle needed to be. And then it maps out all those points and creates that bed mesh. Now to begin the bed mesh calibration, we're gonna go into this tune menu. We're gonna home our printer. We always have to home it before we do anything for the most part. And then once this calibrate option becomes available to us, we are gonna calibrate it. Calibrate it and it goes to the first probe point. And this menu is just like that Z end stop or the Z offset menu rather, where we can bring the nozzle closer to the bed with the negative numbers or further away from the bed with the positive numbers. And we're doing the same thing that we did using a post-it note, get the tension under our nozzle to check how far or close it is. We want the same amount of tension at each probe point. I'm way too high. I need to bring it down. Good tension right there. I'm going to accept it. It's going to move to the next probe point. I'm good right there. Accept and move on. Right here, you'll see it's telling me what the Z height is currently at. And then as we start making adjustments, it lets us know where our Z max and minimum become. Just like the Z offset calibration, whenever we make a negative movement, meaning bringing the nozzle closer to the bed, it will move up first. I like that point. And now we do this for all the remaining six points. We want to get that tension on our post-it note uniform amongst all these pro points. Once you are at your final pro point and you accept it, you are finished. And you'll see right here, we have a probing grid. And my bed is relatively flat. Look at that. Not bad at all. 
Now, of course, the more probe points you get, the more accurate your bed's going to be. We did a 3x3 three three probing grid. Now, I'm not quite finished yet. I need to save this mesh. If I was to turn this off right now, this mesh would not be saved. I click Save As, and then I can give this a profile name. For our purposes, naming it default is perfectly fine. We don't need to name it anything else. Just save default. It saves and restarts, and we are finished. We now have this as our default bed mesh. So whenever we call a bed mesh, which we're going to do very shortly, this is the profile it will call upon. But now we need to actually use this before each print. And the way we do that is through our start print macro. All we're going to do is call to, to use this mesh before each print. I do that in my printer.cfg. We go down to our start print macro right here. Yours might look a little different, but you need to go after the G28, the home wall axis. So I make a space and I'm going to paste in this line. Make sure it is indented properly. That is not correct. It needs to be lined up perfectly. The line is bed mesh profile, and then you load the name of the mesh. We kept the name default, so we're loading default. That's it. That's all we need to add. We can save and restart. And now before each print, when that start print macro is called, it will use our saved bed mesh to print upon. So we should get a really nice flat first layer. So let's do that now, and we're going to do our final Z offset adjustment live. We are beginning our first print and we are going to do our live Z offset adjust. That all happens right here on our interface under the tool option. You'll see right here, it lets us know our current Z offset is 0, 0.0. All that means it's not applying any extras. It's just applying whatever Z offset was in our printer.cfg. These are the increments in which we can adjust it going from the smallest amount all the way up to the highest amount. This arrow up brings our nozzle away from the bed and arrow down brings it towards the bed. The way I'm going to do this is mostly visual. Right now, I'm just going to roll my finger over the outside filament, see how well it's sticking. I'm not getting any areas where it's not sticking. That's good. That means our mesh is doing a pretty good job. And now I look as the second line goes down, and I see how well they are smushed together. And it's actually a really good smush. I'm going to wait till one of the cubes gets printed to really see, though, how well it's going. Also, don't let the BL touch that is attached to the fan shroud fool you. I forgot to take it off. This is normally a BL touch enabled machine, but for the purpose of the video, obviously, I disabled it completely. So as it's printing, I'm trying to get a horizontal view of it under the nozzle to see, and it looks like I have really, really good layer adhesion. So it looks like my offset is a little far from the bed. I'm going to decrease it just a small amount to see if this next cube can come out a little bit better. I'm going to do it. When I decreased it once, you'll notice that Z offset takes that calculation right here. If I was to do it again, it would show me the new calculation. So it's adding it on top of it. You also have to give it a second to actually catch up to the new Z offset. If you're printing just a gigantic one layer cube like I have done in the past, give it a second after you make that calibration to really see how far or near the nozzle is. After the third cube, I am still slightly far farther from the bed than I'd like. So I'm going to lower the Z offset again once more all right probably a little too much smush now we're going to bring it down just a hair so i'm increasing the gap between the nozzle and the bed one more and now my overall calculated z offset is negative 0 0.065 millimeters that last cube printed to perfection this is definitely the z offset i want to keep you're also going to notice all the cubes printed really well. That means the mesh we calibrated is dead on. Our print is finished. We adjusted the Z offset live, but it does not take effect yet. You'll notice the negative Z offset needs to be applied to the offset we already have. Let's look in our printer.cfg real quick and check out what the Z offset is currently. And you'll see it's the same as it was when we first calibrated. 0 0.850. So the live offset that we just calibrated did not take. It didn't save. We need to send a command for it, the printer.cfg to be updated with the current Z offset. That command is Z offset, apply, and stop. And you'll notice it wants to save, config, and restart. If we click the disk at top again, it'll tell us what is being configured, and that is the new end stop. It's adding the offset we created live to our previous end stop. We save, config, and restart. Now, when we go back into our printer.cfg, you will see that that live adjustment has taken effect. We've saved it, and it will be applied to every print going forward. Here it is, 0 0.915.
Folks, and that is it. That's the beginning of getting our probe list, our auto bed level list printer up to printing like it had once. We adjusted our Z offset, we leveled our bed, and then we created that mesh. Now this doesn't have to be done just once. You're gonna wanna do this periodically. Over time, you'll notice your first layer needs to be adjusted. Maybe models aren't sticking like they should anymore. So go through, re-level your bed, create a new bed mesh, and then start printing again. This is a process you might have to do every couple days, every couple weeks, or maybe if you're lucky, every couple months, you don't have to worry about adjusting it. Now we have more to come with our Clipper series. We're gonna get into macros. We're gonna do the same thing, but if you had a BL Touch or a bed loving device, we're gonna go over how to create the mesh for that. Now I have a slew of other videos upcoming. Most of them are almost finished. Some of them are in the process. I just wanted to get some of these basic Clipper videos out there because ever since my last video where people install Clipper, everyone needs to kind of get it up and running. I wanted to jumpstart these and get everyone up to speed. If you stay this long, thank you. Please subscribe, hit the like button. It helps the channel. I want to keep making these videos. I want to keep finding the time to make these videos. So everyone that subscribes, everyone that likes, comments, I really appreciate you. It helps keep this channel going. If you haven't already, join the Discord. It is awesome, it's growing. Everyone is contributing, whether it's expertise, knowledge on subjects outside of 3D printing, or even 3D printing deals that get posted occasionally. There's always something to learn from going on our Discord. If you haven't done that already, please do. You also might notice back there, lurking in the background like a dragon, the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. Oh my gosh. I don't wanna spoil the upcoming video on it, but it is better than expected, and I expected a high amount. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be kind of our budget-minded perspective on a printer that's way over our normal barrier. It's around $1,000. I got the AMS version, so it's over that. It's just under $1,500. Um, so we're gonna get our budget perspective on that if you have the cash. Um, here's the spoiler. Buy it if you haven't. But as always, until next time, boys, girls, everyone else, keep on printing.